Let's start with an objection to the first theory we discussed, objectivism. At the beginning of this lecture, we contrasted intuitions about science and intuitions about morality. In science, we think we have a method that aims at the truth, which can resolve disputes with empirically gathered data. The same doesn't seem to be true of morality. Moral disputes, when we have them, often seem to be recalcitrant, unresolvable. There's nothing like empirical data that could prove one side right and the other side wrong. This seems like an important difference between morality and science, which objectivism has a hard time explaining. That's the objection to objectivism. You might think that relativism makes better sense of this phenomenon. However, there's an objection lurking for this theory, too. If morality is relative to culture, then it's difficult to make sense of moral progress. For example, many cultures in the past condoned slavery, but we've come to think that slavery is morally abhorrent. If relativism is right, that shift in opinion does not represent progress from a pervasive false opinion to a pervasive true opinion. For the relativist thinks that each moral opinion is made true or false relative to the culture in which it's made. The idea of intellectual progress seems like an important commonality between morality and science, which relativism has a hard time explaining. That's the objection to relativism. Finally, what about emotivism? Well, we might worry that if you follow the emotivist in thinking that moral statements are the expression of emotional reactions rather than factual beliefs, it will become hard to explain the possibility of reasoning to our moral opinions. The emotivist might say that this is exactly his point. Our moral opinions are, aren't reasoned, they're emotional. But even if it's true that emotions influence many of our moral opinions, it still seems that we can reason our way to some moral opinions. Indeed, there's a well-known phenomenon of cognitive dissonance, where, as we say, one's head believes one thing, even while one's heart feels something different. This shouldn't be possible if, as the emotivists suggest, moral opinions are really just feelings and not beliefs. Like I said in the beginning, questions about the status of morality are hard questions, and we shouldn't expect to answer them today. But I hope this lecture has given you some food for thought by outlining three basic theories about the status of morality and explaining some of their attractions, but also some of the main objections that face these theories. Thank you for your attention.